get some green on there. Okay, first we'll do our, our little compositional value steady deal thingy. And don't forget to record, Rob. Oh. <laughs> I don't see that red there. Thank you. Okay. But I have the spotlight on there. My spotlight. Spotlight. Thank you for telling me that, uh, Henry. I've been using it all the time now. Okay, great. What does the spotlight do? You virtually turn on a uh, ping video for everybody. Yeah, so that just means that, you know, when somebody else talks or something, it doesn't interfere with the video. You know, you can ping any, uh, as a host, you can spotlight anybody in the group. But uh, in this oh. case, we only need to spotlight on your screen. But if you want to show others, because uh, when you spotlight it, we cannot uh, ping other person. Or we cannot see yeah. other person talking, but we we normally we don't. Right? We don't have to see. <coughs> yeah, because mostly the <coughs> videos on the person's face, you, you'd have to hold your painting up to yeah. show it. So yeah, so anyway. um, okay. yeah, it works best for this class, sure. Okay, that is good. Now let's 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 do our sort of barn. Barn by the creek, or what is it, like a water wheel or something, like a, maybe it was for gold mining or, I see a... It's a water wheel, I, I believe. A sluice Wa or yeah, water, water meal, yeah. water meal, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Water powered, I something. Know. I just, I don't know, I just thought it looked good. Okay. And so if, let, let's just check out our, let, maybe our like rules of thirds here. You know, what you could do is, okay, well, these would intersect about there, right? And these would intersect about there, and there, and there. Let me, let me make sure everybody's muted here. Okay. And then, As you can see, the the barn is, or the water, whatever you call it, the, it's not dead center. It's a little off. So, you know, what we could do first is is just kind of draw in the sky. I don't know. Maybe I want more sky than that. I don't know. It's not bad. Maybe I want more sky than that, though. We'll try that, and if it doesn't work... So, so let's just say, for instance, your land over here... and your water. Oh, let me uh, crop into that, sorry. just kind of instead of drawing in the ha the roof and everything right away what you could do is just kind of box in your parameters of how big do you want this to be so that's easier than putting in all those shapes and then you're going you know I just don't like the placement of that but I've already drawn it so whatever I'm not going to change it <laughs> so we've all done that so well, okay this feels a little large to me so I'm going to maybe make it a little bit smaller from there, maybe there, to there. And then I can go, okay, maybe my roof's about this far, since I've decided that's where I want it. Since it's going downhill a little bit, the top's higher, the bottom's down a little bit lower. Because your vanish, your horizon line is pretty low on it. 
Um, if you look at the boards on the side of the building, these ones are they're kind of going downhill and then they level out. And then toward the bottom, they start going uphill a little bit, right? So right around here, that's where, if it's level, that's where your horizon is. That's how you figure it out. So if you have uh, uh, planks like this, you know, they're parallel to each other, so you can you can get a sense of where it is. Uh, if it was just raw nature, you just kind of have to guess. But this gives you a pretty sure. So let's just say, for instance, there's the corner. And we can kind of come up. Our house. It comes around the back there. About like that. This is going to go, let's just say, for instance, okay. <clears throat> If this is going there, see, this is going to meet there. So we'll just say that our vanishing point is approximately around here. You could use that, or you could you could just kind of eyeball the whole thing. You don't have to be this technical, but it's it's nice to know this stuff sometimes. So what you could do here is let's just take this off the back a little bit, and that that top looks nice, but it's actually not severe enough. It needs to be toward this point, like that. There we go. That's what makes it kind of feel like it's up above you. If it were flat, it's, it looks kind of nice, but it actually ru ruins the perspective. Which it, you know, doesn't mean it's not gonna be a nice piece. I mean, I've seen pieces that have like a lot of impressionist pieces. They, they didn't really consider the perspective perfectly and they, it's just fine. Okay. So we've got a, a circle around here. Maybe it's about that big or so kind of a, what you could do is just draw the whole thing. And then we just come in race out the bottom. That might help you because sometimes it's hard to get that yoga be like, ah. you know what I mean? Like, kind of, whoop, whoops, I can't get that darn circle right. So if you draw the whole circle, <clears throat> you know, there, those are little pointers, they, they help. I got this thing coming up the hill, some little X's down below it. So, you know, just by drawing this, We've already started, so when we get to the, the finished one, um, should be a lot easier. This real rock right here is kind of nice. And, you know, along the edges of our, of our little creek here, try not to make them too straight. If you paint it like this, it just looks like a golf course or something, you know? <laughs> So, which, so I just kind of make that kind of real, or less, less regular. We have a couple of little goodies in there too. I guess they're rocks with stuff growing on top of them or something. This is a lot of dead area, isn't it? You know what I'm gonna do on mine is I'm gonna take mine over this way and add a little bit more to this side. Yeah, that's why we do these things. It's like all this activity and then just a whole bunch of nothing. Looks like there's some kind of broken down bridge here or something maybe. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, so we just got that. Whatever stuff in there, little structures, trees. We've got this sort of light colored tree line here. And 
and then the dark trees up there. I'm not sure I like this one tree placed. So you see, we have this intersection of this and this, and then we have this tree like right there. Um, it's not bad. I don't want, I would just wonder if it were or maybe a little bit more over here. Somewhere in there. And I love these streaks of light coming down. That's one of my favorites. I, I if I see it, if I'm out painting and I see something like that, I, I I'm a sucker for it. I'll usually paint it. <laughs> Just cast a shadow. It's got a little window in there. He cast a shadow. I was just wondering if there's a way we could get a shadow over here. Or maybe here. Because you never know with all these clouds. With, with, with all these clouds and whatever, you can... You can put shadows anywhere you want them. You know, we, we could even take part of this over here and, and say, we have a shadow being cast over this and we have a shadow over here. You can do all kinds of things with the staging of shadows. So we'll see. Um, I know that's a lot of lines that, that can kind of confuse things. <clears throat> okay, so let's go with this. Um, I'm using the the black. I keep wanting to call it the black stallion. It's called black sable, but I'm calling it the black stallion. <laughs> <laughs> I'll change the name. It doesn't matter. It's just a a, 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 key, a code. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and we've got that's it. I had black there. Oh, there is a little black. Okay. Blue and black. And we can. Let's see what we got for this guy there. This already is kind of looking blue. And I don't mean it to be blue. I, I, we're just doing a value study here. <clears throat> lights on the trees it's still much darker than even the lights on the trees are darker than the sky that's what can kind of you know, you'll be painting the, the the trees and you just want to get very light on the trees and then you end up with these really light trees and you go, how come I'm not getting it dark enough because if you just squint your eyes and, and look at the tree line the whole line of the tree is quite a bit darker than, than the background. And then you have this light grouping of trees here, which is quite a bit lighter than this dark grouping of trees here. So 
I think we'll just leave that alone for a while. Let's cast a shadow. There's these shadows running down the hill here. We gotta catch them. Whoops. Come on, where's my dark? Yeah, I guess I, <laughs> I don't have any black. There it is. Okay. Right there and right here behind. We get this light coming back from behind the building. And then the building casts a shadow. And we have some shadows running down the hill this way. Most everything over here is in light. And the creek itself is, is a fairly, fairly dark. Just remember, I, I keep throwing colors in here. I, I'm not meaning to paint color. I'm just meaning to paint a value study. I don't mean to confuse you. Because someone's going to say, inevitably, what color are you using there, Rob? It's, it doesn't matter what color you use. We're just trying to get it. We're just going for the value here. Down there. Now we do have a pretty dark building. What I was thinking about doing was maybe having a little bit of the light hit the building right, right in here. Possibly like a little strip of light like that. Oh, because we have all these strips of light coming down the hill caused by the trees and stuff getting in the way like that. And they're really fun. So of course this side is in shadow and anything, the wheel, wheel would be casting a bit of a shadow, etc. And the lights, the, the, the I'm sorry, the uh, roof is, is too steep of an angle probably to catch any light. So we can just throw that in shadow too. But there, what happens is that you get this shadow underneath the, what do you call it, the roof. And it gets, and in here too, it gets pretty dark in there because you just don't get very much light. It's blocking the light both of those places are some of the darkest places on the piece. And that's what we want to know by doing the value study is how, where we're going to place her. And it's kind of nice that they're there because that's our area of interest mostly. Doesn't mean that we can't have some little some little areas of little small areas of interest as well. All right. And if you notice the, the value of the trees back here, if you squint your eyes, it's just a little bit darker than the value of the grass. They're very, very light. So I'm going to put a little value over those. So I just group it all. There's a million trees and well, there's probably 20 trees in there <laughs> with a million little twigs and whatever. And we just see them as big, one big band. My gosh, if you tried to paint all of these trees, 
you might start pulling your hair out. And I need all the hair I can get. Okay. <laughs> Telling you. Okay. A couple little darker values in there. I'll just see how this is a little bit darker. And the grass, I mean, if you look, look at the white rock in there, the grass definitely isn't that bright. So we can use that as a gauge. That would be your brightest, that and the cloud would be your brightest things in the piece. Rob, I just a quick comment. I went to Mount Body yesterday and saw s oh. uh, snow on the ground. It looked like the draft you you you, you have here. Wow, really? Uh, the first snow in uh, this this fall. Yeah. Oh, it's so cool. You know, one of my students from my Sunday class, she's an illustrator, and she she called me up. You know, we painted in the rain on Sunday. It was it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> We were at the San Gabriel Wash and it rained on us, but uh, she called me up and she said, yeah, I can't make it. I live up in Mount Baldy and it's snowing. I said, wow. She goes, no, I'm going to paint up here today. It's, it's amazing. So <laughs> that was pretty cool. But yeah, Mount Baldy. Wow. Great. I want to get up there. Henry, we got to go paint up there. Yeah, um, not very far, you know, from my home only half an hour drive to yeah. Mount, uh, the village. And, and the, the what, what is that called, the lift is closed, so we, we can only, but there's snow on the uh, lower level around the resort area, you know, the, above the yeah. village, yeah. Okay. That's where I painted. I, I did a sketch, I will post it to, uh, uh, yeah, in a social I network. I already did that yeah. in, on Facebook. You can take a look. Yeah. Definitely. So maybe we should, I will turn this into a snow scene if you don't mind. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, I don't mind. I think we're about done here. A couple little nibbies in there. And... I, don't, I know there's some darks back here. Um, maybe we could hit them a little bit darker. I don't know. But thing is, is that they will detract from the focal point. So we can really just give ourselves a couple of like real goodies in there, you know? Real. If I could, you know, remember the camera will read these as as dark as a lot of these, some of these darks back in the trees, and so it's our job too, also to emphasize what we want to what we want to push. So um, I would I prefer to play those down, and play this up, and then maybe that maybe that highlights a little strong on there, but I think it's good for a value stay, just because it makes it makes the point. We do have a, you know, it is good to, let me just throw a couple of these too. Along the bank here, a couple of these little guys, they, they really sit things down, see what they do? It's always good to throw those in there as well. Because not a lot of light gets underneath, underneath that. And there's value study. Let's do it again. Do that. Cloud 
Dog shape. <clears throat> Tree shape. Around there. Wait. Or you could use a box for placement. Like, I know I, I don't always put out this rule of thirds out here, just so you know. But I think it's a good habit to get into. Just to keep you out of the center. But, you know, what happens is that the more experience you get, the more you uh, you think about the rule of thirds all the time. And as long as you're thinking about it, that's okay. I just want you to think about it. Okay, so... So maybe the corner of my building would be about there. The back about there. And maybe the front part around there. <clears throat> and then... I like that. You don't have to put out a, a dot right here, but it, it can help you. that perspective something like that and we've got that wheel gets a little darker on the right side and in there because it's thick right so, so you know at this scale sometimes it's better just to throw it in with your pencil Whatever works for you. <clears throat> Maybe I do that a little large for this piece, huh? Rob, this yeah. is I have a question. In the yeah. picture, I'm confused because the uh, the sunny side of the building, the, the light side, is underneath the E quite a bit. So that shape isn't at the corner where the um, roof hits in the middle. That that one. You see this one? Yeah. The roof continues down quite a bit. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I haven't drawn that correctly yet. I find it really hard. Um. Get that. Oh, okay. Let's see. It just gives it more character because that roof. Yeah. Hangs over. So. You just draw it past the line. Past the line, yeah. Yeah, past the line, hangs way down. Past the line like that, and like that. Right, okay. And you can make it as rickety as you want. I mean, I, that, it, the ricketier the better. Is that right. a word, ricketier? Yeah, it's, it's not perfectly shaped. <laughs> no, I like them when they're kind of broken down looking, you know. Yeah, the diamond of it is weird. It almost looks like someone redid the roof or something, it's so nice. But okay. Just kind of like, like that, maybe. Okay, thank you. Sure. Yeah, roof, they, you know, they call this right here the pitch of the roof. Um, that can be troublesome. Those areas can be tough. We, we can mess with that. That'd be fun. Pull it off the side there a little bit more, you know. We can throw some little goodies off the side. There's just stuff hanging around. It's a working cabin, you know? Okay. And we've got that going up the hill. X and a smaller X up here. Going up the hill. So I think this side might be a little higher than this side because it's on a slope like this. 
try to make this one higher and this one like that. I mean, that's way down too low, but that's the idea. That's what I was thinking. Probably more like that. Okay, big rock here. Hillside tends to come right about to there in the background. And then we have our little light tree line. And, you know, I see that sort of bare tree. I think that would be nice. You know, you, you, don't, you, you can put it in. You don't have, I didn't even put it in my other one, so that's kind of nice. With all those pine trees, I guess it's one of these trees. Yeah, there's some bare trees, and they're so fun to paint. A couple of rocks in the river. There are almost always some rocks in the river. Little ones, big ones, whatever. And then kind of a broken down bridge there. Again. Moss covered rocks. I think we're ready. So we're going to go with ultramarine blue in the sky. That's what I'm doing. trees. I would take your Prussian blue. Maybe a little lemon yellow. It's a little cooler yellow. And I don't know, I think that might be a little strong for that far away. And that's pretty light. Remember, we need it darker than these values up here in general so if you throw just a little bit of red in there too so Prussian blue lemon yellow and a touch of cad red that'll mute down the colors so they're not so saturated that's interesting now I put my tree line up here way up above the cabin's height and I don't like how the back of this see how the back of this is lining right up with the top of the cabin so I'm going to bring that down a little bit so maybe I'll make a mental note to raise that up a little higher on the next one That's good. And how about we just do all that green grass first? I'm gonna use lemon yellow and a lot of it. <laughs> lemon yellow and a little bit of the Prussian. Really, and those little reds are dead moss on the top of the rocks. You could definitely hit some of those in there. But I think first, I just really want to. And you know what I'm going to do here is 
hit this over all my grass, even the stuff in shadow. Just hit it over all, everything. So nice and grouped. It's very... A little on here, a little on there. Now with that same color, I'm just going to add more red to it because it's already on my brush. Okay, get a little bit more orange, some of that orange in there. I just want to get it out there and see it. So that's such a yellowy green that throwing a little red in there just turns it orange, which is the perfect color for these. And I'm seeing it everywhere, so I'm just going to sort of dot it around, hit it on top of the rocks there. There's dead stuff over here. And lo and behold, it's very similar to the color of these trees back here. They're a little more muted, though. They're not quite as strong of a color, so we can... We can... Um, just add more green to your red. Let's see. I'll test it out here. That's not bad. So I just took that orange and I added a little bit more green to it. Or possibly a little more blue to it. Let's do that. Oh, that was a lot of blue. I got green on me. That's the color, I just want it lighter. There, so it's more of a muted color. It's in other words, it's not as strong as a lot of these. These are, these orangey colors here. <clears throat> Down here we have a kind of a brown in the water. So red, yellow, blue. Honestly, if you just take red and add it to your green, right? Because green is already yellow and blue, right? So, you see how it gets after a while? You just see what's in a color and you know which way to push it by looking at whatever you're trying to mix. This is the power of working with a minimal palette. This is why I teach you this way. I mean, I, it's, it's very, very, very good for, well, you know, a lot of painters, this is all they use anyway. But it has all these little side benefits to it. Not only do you become a better, uh, a, a more capable of matching a color, not that we have to match colors or anything, but the, you know, when we want to make a color, how do we make that color? What's in it? Well, you keep doing the red, yellow, blue thing, and you'll know. It doesn't take much time. And the other colors, I just call them crutch colors. And I like a good old crutch color, you know? I'm a sucker for a crutch color, too, like Opera Rose. Or, you know, some, like, quinacridone yellow or something, you know. I love those colors. Um, but I add, I, and I just add them to my, my base palette. That's all. Now, if you squint your eyes, you can see that in general, I know there's little white, there's little white, uh, uh, things going on in the river, trickles or whatever. And you can hit a couple of those in there if you like. But, um, in general, this, the, the, grass is lighter than the water which is basically you're looking into the mud of the water right there right so it's just interesting all right and if you'll notice how similar the color is to the cabin of the water very similar so why not it's on your brush right
Why not? Let's just get some colors on there. And I know I like that little strip of white on there, so I'll just take my my little thing here. Pull that out. Whoops. That's probably better. There we go. I don't think it would be as bright as the other. Oh, maybe it would. I don't know. And then let's get some some dark under here, right under those. I'm using uh, violet. So ultramarine blue and magenta. There's a little something under there too. And then it's really, really dark under here. Good darks in there. I like this brush. Thank you. By the way, I, I haven't even thought about it. That's when I know I like a brush. By the way. Thank you. When it's doing, yeah. Okay. When it when it does what I tell it to do, and um, I mean it's got some scraggly little hairs right here, but I actually don't mind that. Sometimes you get nice little things that happen that way. Um, so you you get nice little natural. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Yeah, the, the black I don't think sailing. about the brush. That's when I know I'm falling in love with it. Yeah, I'm <laughs> going to change the name with your suggestion. Black uh, Sterling, right? I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, a, okay. it's more un, uh, untamed kind of. Yeah. The black Sterling. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like a movie. Yeah. Okay. Now let's, let's cast the shadow. And you know, we have this really dark shadow behind it, and that's just fine. But nothing saying that you couldn't like have a whole bunch of small little shadows coming down the hill or whatever. It's really up to you. <coughs> so I'm going to take this brush and just I'm going to try straight Prussian blue and see what happens here. Because the, I'm going to glaze it over this, <coughs> so it's almost the same as adding. See, so that's just straight Prussian blue. It's almost the same as adding them all together, but you get a glaze, so you might get a little bit different effect. So let's, let's just try this. That's a pretty strong color. And it's okay, because if we wanted to, we could just... We could just... Um, gray that by adding a little bit of red. And there's some in here along this edge. And this edge. Remember everything on the right side because the light's coming from the left. Everything on these, on the right sides of things, is going to be a little darker. There's some little shadows in there. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to leave that one white. Oh well. Sue me. Um, That might be some kind of neat like that. More more little strips of light. I think something about that is really interesting. And then just really smack a couple of darks in some of those interest areas. Wagon wheel, uh, or the water wheel, excuse me. But by the way, these rocks cast, if you look hard, because sometimes the water blurs it out, they actually cast little shadows, see? And they can be effective. things and of course we've got these little broken down 
And we'll put a couple of those on there. Yeah, I like this brush. And I can I can get it all ratty like that, you know, and kind of I like that. The natural bristles are nice. Okay, so I think we're about ready to get started. Black Sable. Black Sable. Okay. <laughs> oh, let's let me shoot this out a little bit so you can see them both together. And that's what they look like as a team. That's a good idea. And we'll see what, what else, what other kind of trouble we can get in. Yeah, I did put something dark. I, I do think that the dark up in this corner was worth it. Every time I say that, my, my teachers always jump in my head. I can remember my high school teacher, Mrs. Lesser. I still keep in contact with her. She's so great. She should take this class. She would love this class. She, she does plein air painting. Not that I ever even knew she did it. I didn't even know. I was doing like airbrush art in her class in high school. I was really into all that. I really, I could show you my airbrush too. I haven't even, every once in a while I'll, I'll look at it. <laughs> I haven't even touched that. I haven't actually used it in probably 20 years. But, oh, you know what? I think I actually used it to uh, fix, I repainted a fender. <laughs> so I shot air, car paint through it. But no, I mean, honestly, you could, uh, I didn't even know she did, uh, plain air but anyway I, I forgot to tell you she said it's just choices Rob that's all it is that's all you're doing here art is just choices that's it it's just what choices do you want to make and how do you want to make them you know okay so what you can do again if you like see I put these points there you can't see them too well, can you? Let me let me zoom this out a little bit. Because that is pretty good, isn't it? There we go. Yeah, so those would be your sort of rules of thirds. Just to help you just to, you know, so you don't put that cabin right in the middle. Okay. We could just say, you know, how big do you want to make it? I know, I noticed in mine, I made mine a little bit smaller than it actually is. And... Well, we could, we could block it out, get it, get it certain like a sense of how big we want it I'll draw a little darker so you can see just a box and I'll just rock that out and I'll go well how big do I want to make this you know do I want it smaller do I want it bigger it's pretty good we have that tree line I sort of did want to make more of an issue out of the sky tree line here or I don't know if they're dead but no leafage I 
Those are green. There's the river. <clears throat> Got this interesting rock there. So maybe, let's say maybe we have a dot around there. And um, maybe a little bit more on that. If you notice, this side's way lower than this side. See how it kind of goes uphill? I don't know if that's because it's a rickety old building or if it really is something like that. And like I said, you can kind of make that wobbly, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Looks better if it's not. That's what's really great about the, you know, in the Midwest, a lot of the farmers, they'll, they, they keep their old barns. So there'll be like a 200 year old barn right next to their brand new barn and they just keep them. So really, really interesting to look at. So that's what I do say, I just bring this down below that. I guess I'm making a bigger issue of this. And it's not a perfect circle. It's a little bit more of an elliptical thing, but you know, it's all broken, so it's not gonna be perfect. You just, just, just draw yourself a kind of a something circleish. And it looks like there's little, like a wall or something in the way here or something, kind of just steps down. Yeah, just kind of really steps down. There's stones and whatever at the base. That's fun. Some little planks, window. bring those these sides approximately there they don't have to be perfect you could draw out the clouds if you like you don't have to I usually just paint them in and then we have this line sort of where the hillside starts and these trees end. We'll shoot some little shafts of light coming down the hillside. And remember the cabin itself creates a little bit of a shadow. very similar sizes so maybe I'll give them a little friend off to the side there and I love how you see how occasionally on the edges of the grass you'll have some grass shooting up over it breaks up this perfect line so I'll lay it out in a perfect line then I'll come back later and I just kind of throw in stuff overlapping the edge Same over here. Just to give myself something more random. Nature's taken over. A couple little 
rocky things over here. Those could just be stains of color. They don't have to be all rendered out or anything. Hmm, he's got a little, I didn't see the little baby tree over there. It's kind of fun. And the big tree, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that tree. I think I'm gonna, hmm. I might go with this other tree. We have enough pine trees. I'll do the rest of my brush. That's what I'm doing. You could throw in that pine tree if you like. Okay, see how this line right here in the building goes downhill? You could really bring that down there. Little things can help you with your perspective just to get things to sit down right. There is a little thickness to this little, uh, in the inside of this roof here, see? It's got a thickness to it. Kind of stands off the building a bit, so. Could definitely bring this down lower too. So our building, we can do what we want. I love this stuff. I don't even know what this is down here in the ground. Junk. And we've got sort of a bridge that just kind of goes across. It looks like there's a couple of... Uh, supporting beams and whatever, it's all broken down. And then over here, there's some sort of fence, which looks kind of nice. I don't know if I want a nice looking fence of mine. Maybe what I'll do is just keep keep a rickety old fence kind of going back like that. You know, when they have the barbed wire kind of going, I don't know, we'll see. And we're just about ready to get to business. Oh, I didn't draw my wagon wheel, did I? Something in the wagon. Just a little shadow off to the right side. And these spokes don't have to be perfect. Something like a, like a star. A little bit of a thickness to this. That goes in a shadow. I think we're about ready. And Remember last week with the big old this brush? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we're going there. Here we go. I'm putting it all over the whole thing. You could also just squirt if you have a squirter. That really helps too. Just sit here and squirt. Either way. And you know what? This will not matter. Your colors go into each other. It is so fun though. I should have really clamped this thing down though. Don't buckle up on me. I'm using ample water. There we go. Put a clamp here. Clamp there. Should be good with that. Now, let's have a blast. Let's grab that ultramarine blue, throw it on all in there. 
I know we have clouds in this area, so I'm just gonna sort of avoid that area. And right in there, and in there. Looks like I didn't get it wet enough. Okay, no problem. Chicka chicka. Okay. And so fun, huh? Just to let that paint rip. And like it went into my tree line, it doesn't matter. If you want your clouds to be a little bit more, you know, soft edges, see, look at that. Soft edges. I mean, they're pretty much done. Which, see, a little, couple of little, which you could do. Let's see, we have a little bit of paint. There's some little values of in, in the cloud itself, so get a couple of those. Look at that beautiful, beautiful wash right there. Wonderful. Let's get that green going. Prussian blue. I'm using lemon yellow and some red in there. A cat red in there. Let's see what we got here. If it bleeds into your sky, it won't matter. You make it this great looking edge. You couldn't have got any other way. If it gets a little out of control, you know, you just dab it up with your rag a little bit. This is gonna go lighter, but I think I like it. I think I'm gonna go a little bit darker than that though. Just gonna add a little bit of Prussian blue to that. See, I'm just dabbing it, dabbing it, dabbing it. What that does is it gives me a little, little modeled modulation. Murky modulation. Goes right into the, it actually won't even matter if it's in there. So I'm not gonna bother making that too clean. We could mess with that edge a little bit if we want. Looks great. Now I like this area right here, our dead trees are kind of orangish. Um, I just took a little orange and added it to the green. Yeah. Orange and orange and blue will do it too. You see, it's all red, yellow, and blue. Yeah, any way you look at it. That's yeah, all like that. There's some over here too. Get a little dry down here. I'm gonna go with that with kind of a dirty brush with some of this stuff on it already. I'm gonna dip it into the lemon yellow and let's. Oh yeah, see. So it's not a perfect lemon yellow, you know. And let's just throw that stuff around. It's so fun. Oh my gosh. It's one of the reasons I chose this piece. Big areas. Could be could have been a lot of things actually could do this on, but so fun. I mean our land is almost as fast as we did our little comp. Our little just paint it right over the shadows. These guys don't doesn't matter if it goes right into your water.
very strong color right behind it. Now red, yellow, and blue again for a brown for the building. You know, we might want to even emphasize that there, our building is a little more, um, a little more on the red side. Let's see, kind of a red or a brown. That way, it would kind of pop out a little bit more. I know it isn't. It's it's really a sort of kind of oxidized color over here on this side. It's very light. Just paint it over the whole thing. Some of these lights over here are pretty light. I'm just going to go over the whole thing like that. Now we have this. I didn't even put that in the drawing, did I? Here's a here's a little trick. I'll use the moss the moss dots brush for this. I'm gonna just pull out. I just use this brush because it has a, a nice fine tip, that's all. Let's see how it kind of pulls the paint out. Makes it a little bit. Let's try. This one. Oh, that worked better. So the, uh, the general weighing brush you know, I usually get this effect pretty easily with a general wing brush, so I had to go to that one. See, it really pulls it out. And hey, look at this. You can just pull out a couple little guys over there, too, see? Just to make it a little bit lighter here and there, just to get that effect kind of going. And I think in the water, I still want a brown, but I think I'm going to push the kind of a greenier brown. Like there's moss down in the water. So it's not the same brown. I'm gonna keep it. Keep them guessing. And so starting a painting off wet into wet like this is a great idea. I'm getting this hard edge there. I kind of wish. Nothing I can do about it now. I think it'll be fine. Yeah, that looks good. I'll throw a branch over it too. Now one thing is, and this is drawing the same value as that, so we'll have to glaze into it. some little orangey things happening around too. Uh, cat, cat red, cat yellow. Some over here. Just to break things up. some of these white splashy things that are happening in there just I'm just taking a dry brush I just I just wet it dried it and see it just drinks it right up and that's so wet it's just filling back in but that's fine we'll, we'll just hit it a couple more times still builds that sort of modulation which, which I guess my eye was wanting that Yeah, 
and I'm wanting to kind of go into this. This is the time to not go into this <laughs> because if you start painting on top of this right now, it will it'll start picking up, and then you get that oh. The yuckies. You'll start getting the yuckies. That's my technical term right there. So, um, what I'm going to do to speed up this demo is hit it with a hair dryer. You might want to get a hair dryer too, an old hair dryer or something. Um, hot tip thrift store. You can usually pick up a hair dryer for like $2. Do it. This one doesn't have the label on it anymore, but I got it from the Salvation Army. Uh, sometimes it has it written right on there. But yeah, I'll just pick up some, some of these old hair dryer. I mean, I've been using this thing for like, I mean, at least five years. And it doesn't show any signs of going down. So, I mean, you know, you're just going to get paint all over it anyway. But this will speed up the drying time. So let me, let me mute myself so I don't blow your ears out here. I'm, I'm Mr. Clamp. You can just call me Mr. Clamp. I have this. I should show you this. Oh, this is hilarious. Um, but I have above me, I have this railing, which I'm using to hold up the webcam and everything. And I've just got clamps all over it. And then I have little extra clamps because I never know when I'm going to need them. So this was starting to pull up a little bit on the corner. So I just clamped the corners a little bit more. Clamps are great. You gotta love them. I don't realize, I just looked up there, I really do have a lot of clamps. Maybe I need to cut back. <laughs> it becomes an addiction after a while. Tell me. Okay. All right, so, okay, I'm gonna go into my my background trees here with a, a generally a darker value and see look see the stroke I'm using see just kind of going like that I'm just placing the brush down like this this might be a good one for the black sable let's try this because it's more of a natural edge to it let's see Ooh. yeah See, it's giving me a rougher edge. I like that. I just use Prussian blue. With a little bit of red and yellow in it. Again, it's just red, yellow, and blue, but mostly the Prussian blue I'm letting dominate it. And I want these to be kind of small. There we go. Just like that. That's how fast that is. Tree line. You see how the, also the, the tree line goes into this, this dark part here? Just pull a couple down the back like that. And just 
if it gets too hard edged, um, just take a wet brush and loosen that edge up. Make this it, make this line here a little bit more random. And see, you'll get a little bit of bleeding around the outside. Just leave it, it looks great. I love that. All right, so I'm gonna pull some more down into there. Some of that stuff down into there like that. And then we could just kind of bleed out the edges, just wet into wet. So I, I kind of dry brush that in there and then I, with a wet brush, just bleed out those edges. Any of those little background holes you want to put in there. See, this is what's so great about a natural brush like this black stallion brush. Oh my goodness, see? Look how, look how random that looks. I'm not doing it. But I am making the selection to choose a brush that'll do it. So in a way, I am doing it. <laughs> I used to say that when I was an art director, I didn't do all the work, but I knew how I wanted it to look and I knew how to, I, I, I used the people like I'm using these brushes. I would use them for their talents. Actually, it's the same thing I do a lot of time in my classes. My uh, entertainment design class, I do that quite a bit. We, <clears throat> there we go. Stuff like, look at that, I love it. Just like an impression. We got some stuff back here. I'm gonna lay down, yeah, I think that's a good idea. What I'm doing now is I'm just, I'm laying down water, but if you'll notice, it's kind of a dry brush. So I'm just, I'm just kind of, I don't want it to be absolutely wet everywhere. And so I'm gonna lay this one down. This is how you get the randomness, see? Meow. Let me get a little bit more color on here. I can just kind of come back into some of this stuff all random like that. Some of those edges. If you're wanting to see how rough my brush is, which I can come back in with the treetop and just kind of just guide. I'm just guiding the brush like an art director. Just that's what I wish to do with it with the um, with the people I hired. I would just guide them to watch. I'm gonna throw this down all rough. And then the brush one, it's very much like watercolor in the sense that you just guide it. You know what you want out of it, you just guide it. Like that. I wasn't even gonna put that tree in and I did anyway. I think it looks good there though. right along that tree roof and then ooh, that is so random look at that my gosh one little stroke looks like a tree look at this one two three la -dee da magical loving this brush I'm seeing the I'm seeing the the use for this brush now see You just have to work with them for a while before you say, oh, okay, now I know what to use this brush for. It's better than the General Wang. The General Wang brush is good for this stuff. Not quite as good as this, though. So. But as you can see, the General Wang absorbed this one thing for me pretty well. So I'll just do that. 
All right, interesting. And that's how I learn. That's how art is learned. So much of it is learned just by doing. We got this little baby tree right here. I mean, look, look how thrashed my brush is. Nobody would ask you <laughs> to keep a brush looking like this thrashed. Usually they're going, you know, curl it into a perfect little tip. But look how perfect this is for doing a little little tree like this. Look at this. La di da, you know? It's just, I mean, I had some darker values in there and everything, but it's just perfect. The tree shapes just choo -choo. wonderful. That was fun. Okay. So instead of a literal depiction of a whole bunch of tree line, you get this, you get a human, a human's interpretation of it. This is pretty yellow. I'm going to take a little bit of Prussian blue. Let's see what I got here. Yeah. I just want to take the edge off this. It's so yellow. I want to keep some of the yellow, though. So I'm just going to kind of randomly go around with this very light green that I just made out of Prussian blue and lemon yellow. I guess, can you hear that, you guys? These World War II fighters are going over my head. I can hear them. Wow. That was loud. Gas guzzlers. So this is just uh, taking the edge off the green and adding a little bit of texture as well. I'm just gonna just just take that over the back. There's a little bit of greenery on this rock too. I think it's time to do some shadows now. Let's see, we just straight. Woo! That's um, just straight Prussian blue over that. And I'm not going to worry about having any perfect edges or anything. I'm just going to bring this down. It comes down, down about there. And I wanted some shafts of light coming down, down the hill, down the hill, and then it kind of starts leveling off. And we get some stuff in here. I want to keep this edge right here really kind of lost. I'm just going to take a little water on that edge. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Just a lost edge. And then, of course, the, the cabin casts a shadow. Softer edges. Just, just use a little water. A little water on the brush. Looks like there's some sort of Serious hillside in here. That's interesting. I, I, I just like the little cast shadows. Now, when you go to a place where you think that would be a great place to paint, or you see a photograph or something that inspires you, try to take a second and guess why. I mean, and say it out loud to yourself. Say, oh, I love those cast shadows. That's what I like about this piece. If, if you say that, that'll be your emphasis. I mean, usually your 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 focal point will just kind of speak to you. I'm just making it a little bit darker in some places. A 
we'll lose that edge here. And if some of the blue goes right up into the building, I just don't care. No, no way. And we did have this, remember I told you earlier, I, along the bank here. So watch, I'm gonna dry brush a lot of this little shadow along in here. Shadow behind that rock. And it'll look a little stiff edged until I hit it with a little water. Remember, these would be casting a shadow too. Just like that. Cast shadows onto the water. And then I'm just gonna take some, just water on my general weighing brush. I use the, the black stallion for this stuff. Great for dry brushing, wow. And that was just the same color I used back here, Prussian blue with a little bit of, I think there's more, plush, more Prussian blue in this. And I already just like how how random and natural everything looks in here. So, the big lesson is uh, that it's usually a better idea to start off the painting with really saturated colors, and, in, and we're doing in watercolor. Um, it's not always a great idea to do this, but, but in, in lots of cases, starting off wet into wet, then coming back and glazing back over it and dry brushing back over the wet into wet will give you all kinds of effects. I mean, I couldn't have got this effect any other way. And you'll get all these little choice effects. So, and what, you know, I use the hairdryer just to speed up the time, but usually I would just, you know, maybe work on a little area or, or I don't know, something. Maybe go have a cup of coffee. <laughs> Whatever. And let's shade the building too now. So now what would happen if I use blue on the shadow of this building? Well, guess what? I am. See, it looks blue. I'm going to use blue on there because you can see right through the blue. I'm gonna go right over the window too. You can see right through the blue into the brown. So those are good. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I was using um, ultramarine blue. Let me try that here. Just try it up here. It is falling into very much the same values as the background. And you know, because it's facing upward, it will receive more light than down here. So I'm just gonna pull off. That's about where I want it, yeah. And all this too, we could just keep this really, see? Really dry brushish. I'm just pulling down like the planks down in here too. Oh, we were going to have that strip of light on there, huh? Oh, I forgot about that. Got so lost in what I was doing. I think it got that pretty dark. All right, that's okay. It is what it is. We'll see what we can do.
because I'm thinking I want to shoot a little bit of gouache in here. So I might actually take a little gouache on the building to get that sort of oxidized feeling. But I'm going to hit the shadow in here too. Nice and that offers a lot of contrast. And um, there's a little bit in here too. I see sort of a hard edge there, so I'm gonna just gonna dry brush that like this, right into my little planks. Perfect. There we go. And same under here. You want a really good dark under this one. And see how it gets a little lighter as it gets toward the bottom. Since I have that on my brush, might as well come to the underside of this. And then the front part of this has got some little things in it. Some of those little buckets in there. So I don't have to put those in. And maybe on the right side of each one of these little guys these little so thing here I'm just gonna put them in dark first and I'll come back and hit a little gouache on them I don't want to make too big of a deal out of this If you want to, some of these lines, just you could take some of these lines on your point. Like that. You kind of just create a little bit of maybe a little bit of depth. That's fine. this rock right here. I'm just going to hit a little bit of shadow. Along there. There's all kinds of little model modulated shadows in here. I just kind of throw them in like that. Even in here too, just, and they look a little weird. 
until you hit a little water and let the water do the love. The water would just sort of dissipate it into the background like like that. Looks like my brown water could be a little bit browner. You know, it's watercolor, they dry different. I'm using, um, let's see, okay. That looks kind of red, but I like it. Um, red, red and green, okay? So make a yellow and blue, make a green, and then add, add a little bit of a, uh, Red to it. Just different variations. That one's a little cooler. That one's a little warmer. Different variations of brown. You see, this is why you don't want to buy them out of the tube so much. I mean, not necessarily. If you make them, you get all the little variations. See, now, now I add a little bit more red to it, get a little bit redder. Add a little blue to it, gets a little cooler yellow to it, etc. So, all right, and then, I'm just gonna use a little bit of water on the edges here, because they're so hard. And, Use um, a general wing brush here and just for some of those little splashes and things. These little water splotches. <laughs> Let's just go around and hit some darks. We already did, but. I think along this edge here, we get quite a quite a number of darks, and it's still wet, which is kind of nice because that'll dissipate. So it's just it's just it's just taking it and blending it out into the water. Um, like an ultramarine blue, I think would be good for that. trying to keep this whole edge really sort of random. I do get dark underneath the bridge here too. Notice how this edge doesn't have the shadow on it because because the light's coming from here and hitting most of this in light. I saw a little bit of something in there. And then these get a little dark right underneath. Just like just like anything, and it usually, even on water, it needs a little bit of something to sit it down. Just ultramarine blue there, right? Right in there.
take that cash shadow from the cabin right over all this. And because it's it's water, it won't really have a hard edge on it. I mean, it's moving water. Sometimes you will get a hard edge of a cast shadow on really calm water. I like that piece of grass that's coming up over the... Just remember your lemon yellow is very opaque. I'm using it very thick here. I'll just take it right over there like that. <laughs> Just lemon yellow. It comes off the rocks here too. It's almost like gouache. It's on my brush. Maybe just hit a couple of um, not grassy strokes. I know in the picture they have some going right across the front here. You don't have to put those in, but. To where they really show up is over something dark. Just to kind of naturalize that edge a little bit. There we go. <clears throat> fancy stuff in there. return to nature this thing must be my gosh 200 years old shadow under the fence whatever oh yeah I wanted my little rickety fence in the background screen what you're seeing <clears throat> mine's not nearly as dark as what you're seeing for this big tree up here. Hey, um, <clears throat> just make yourself a brown, a red, yellow, and blue. Give yourself plenty of paint. Don't be stingy with that paint. Make too much. was just made for this. I'm 
I'm gonna try this um, this rabbit combination brush. Let's see how this works. This is a big brush for these little things. So Ooh. Let's give it a try. Look at that. Look at look how sensitive that line is. Let me get a little more paint on there. I mean, look at that. I mean, we're talking, we're talking, oh, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, I'm sold on this brush. Um, that's, that's a lot to do with the brush. I mean, I know how to paint myself a good branch, but it helps to have a good brush to do it. Wow, look at that. I can just get all these real calligraphic marks. Look who just stole the show in the painting, huh? <laughs> nice cabin. What a tree. I don't, but you know, you've probably heard me say a hundred times. Sometimes I think I do the whole painting to set it up so I can just paint myself a good tree. Oh man, I could do this all day long. I'm just, just barely, barely, barely touching the surface. Just like that. Oh, I forgot the sky. You can't make a bad move with this thing, I'm telling you. All I'm doing is just touching. Make sure your branches overlap each other. You don't want them all side by side. See, I take a few of them over like that. Well, I'm glad I tried this brush. This is, this is, I'm gonna call this one Rob's brush, Rob's uh, branch brush. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why this is made for calligraphy, wow. I could really write a good signature with this too. Rob, is that one of Henry's brushes? Yeah, that's the rabbit combination. Rabbit combination? Yeah. Thank I mean, I can do a pretty good one with the General Wang brush too, but uh, I think this one's superior because Henry was telling me that the, the hairs are finer. It, it really, see, let's see now. Oh yeah, I can do pretty darn good with this one too. If I do too many more, I'm going to ruin my tree. But do we do have some at the bottom that are light? Kind of light over the dark background? So I'll gouache, I'll gouache some of those in. We have a big old tree over here too. See my tree from thick to thin, very gradually. Very gradual, and then look at it. Look at that branch. I can, I can do anything with this brush. Anything. It's crazy. Taking this down there. Overlap. I mean, they could do many different things. Again, very much just barely touching the surface. And we have all these branches back here too. Look at them all. I'm just crisscrossing. Done. Just like that. Didn't have to be anything else. That is magic. I like to at the base of my trees, you saw this one was just kind of floating. I just sort of dissipated into nothing.
thing I was saying earlier, I was going to come back and hit some little shadows into my little, my little baby tree there. Lots of these trees around. They're, they're mostly light on a dark background. I'm going to just break this up a little bit with, with some little darky ones. And then we'll hit a little gouache on there too. See, see all I'm doing here is just breaking up a few things. I'm not making them really drastic. They're not really dark values or anything. Just kind of breaking all this up. And I don't want to ruin the beauty of the that wash in the background, so I'm going to stop. We have a few little dry brushy things down here. You know, there's always brush everywhere. And I'm just dry brushing that in. So my fence, fence is virtually lost. some some gouache and one thing I wanted to do was oxidized effect, whatever you want to call it. Some on the wagon wheel. I'm just dry brushing it on there, putting on there pretty darn dry. on this this subject we have this thing kind of coming down a couple of these little guys in there they come out a little bit bright you just take a glaze glaze them down I kind of wanted a little shaft of light hitting, but I'm going to try, I'm going to see if I can pull this off here. So let's just say there's a little light coming through the trees and really smacks the edge of the roof there, but maybe this, this part goes into shadow. And then it comes off over here and really just kind of hits that hard. I mean, really hard. But see, on the edge facing it, you're going to get a lot of smackage. Like right here on this wheel. It's not there, so I have to make it up, so. And the nice thing about it is if we don't like it, we could just glaze it down to brown again. We can certainly take this idea too into our water. See all the little blurries? I'm just dragging it on there, you know, dry brush. Look at Sergeant's water. Everywhere. the rocks little goodies on there all kinds of lichen and stuff stuck on there 
even on the trees, we could come back and hit a little bit because that will dry much, much different. We were even going to come back and hit some of these, these branches with the, you know, where there's a dark background, we could just hit, hit some of the branches a little bit. Lighter. Maybe even the side of our tree facing the light. And where it's over here, you know, you, you, you don't really want to hit much. It's just where the dark's over the light. I mean, sort of the, we have a darker background. That's where you want to hit a couple. And you certainly could pull in a couple of like these guys from down here. Over the dark stuff. See, it's not going to show up very well over here, over the light stuff. To really emphasize it over the dark stuff. I'm not going to do every little thing. I'm seeing a little branch in the background over here catching some light. That's neat. Now, how would you do that anyway? You're supposed to paint around that darn little branch, that all that little tree back there? You can. I'm not going to do it. I'll just have to lose the Transparent Watercolor Society contest. <laughs> That's the way I'd handle it. And that's the way a lot of masters handled it. I know. They steady hard. I'm looking at those things with a magnifying glass thinking, oh, my gosh. Not only did they use white gouache, they used it like freely and amply of tons just had no qualms about it. But they didn't kill all the beautiful luminosity as well. It's a nice little duality. I'm gonna, just gonna hit a little bit of color over my little wash I put in there. A little bit of orange. Maybe a little bit more yellow in my orange. Yeah, ooh, that's, that's a lot. I don't hate it though. See this stuff in the, this little thing, I put them on really bright and they dried really nice and I think I like that value. This right here feels a little bit bright. So I just take a little glaze over it and whoosh, that'll darken it. And if it's not dark enough, I just go over it again. But don't go over when it's wet. Or you'll, you'll, all your dry brushing stuff, it'll, it'll turn into mush. Unless you don't care. And remember, you know, so the, we know we're at that end because uh, we're doing details and edges, right? Details, if you want to put in little grassy things, you can do that. You don't need to. If you can, if you want to, you know, throw in a couple of little grassy things. This, this brush is great for doing, wow, great for this too. I think, I think me and the rabbit combination brush are going to be friends. <laughs> I love a brush that does what I ask it to do. Um, and these brushes, I swear, I beat them up like crazy. I really do. Thank you, Rob. Um, I just had uh, this brush. The reason I recommend it to you is because there's a Russian-oriented um, uh, teacher who uh, requires his student to get this brush. So we got uh, some 
uh, oh. inquiries of a rat, rat, uh, um, yeah. <laughs> rat hair brush, yeah, combination brush. Yeah. Well, I, I can see why. Really natural looking strokes. It, it does really help. It does. I mean, I'm constantly, you'll hear me say, I, you know, I just give me that old junky brush over there, you know, I'll use it. And I, I like a junky brush too, but I'm telling you this, this brush is, you know, you don't want too, too much of a junky brush when you're doing all this stuff. Boy, that was a lot of fun. Oh my gosh. So much fun experimenting with all this stuff. So you see how kind of random and let me, let me, let me get a close up of that. Let me, let me zoom in here. You see how random? I mean, a lot of it's the painter, but a lot of it's the brush. I'm telling you. I love these little sort of natural little background holes coming through. fun to go around your painting like that. That was fun. Okay, everybody. Get those paintings in. Let's do the crit. Uh, I already did the uh, snow thing uh, when, oh. yeah, as the draft. But uh, anyway, yeah, you can crit critique that one. I'm working on the regular one, uh, still finishing. But you can do my <laughs> first one <laughs> instead of uh, the finishing one today. The Henry, you're such an overachiever. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're, you you got it in already. Okay. Let's see. So far, I have one in, and that's fine. Uh, let's see. Get a drink of water here. Okay. <clears throat> what else? Uh, Let's screen share. Hey, neat. Yeah, that's a uh, uh, ten. Actually, eight and a half by eleven and a half, uh, eleven. It's a like a computer size paper. Yeah. Yeah, it fits on the nice. Well, look how effortless. Very effortless. I love these little drips. Let me let me get to. Uh, where's my tools? There it is. Finally, it doesn't just come up all the time. Sometimes I have to wait for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, love these little drips like this too. Those are great. Thank you. And you got a serious contrast. Look at the contrast. Wow, which makes the whites feel whiter. Yeah, I tried to get the snow feel. That's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're having to make it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just uh, uh, make it up. Yeah. And that, that's the thing about snow. Oftentimes, especially when you have a blue sky, uh -huh. you'll get really, uh, you'll get kind of a, like blue shadows. Oh, okay. So the but, snow actually should be uh, bluish, white. Um, huh. I mean, it looks good, 
Oh, heck, see how this one is right here? Yeah. That, that's a that's a bit more. If you get too blue with it, it, it can it can look ridiculous. Yeah. You know, somewhere in there. So, but the other thing about a, a about snow shadows uh -huh. is you want them to be really light, like this, really light. Oh, okay. And I'm just saying that as a general thing yeah. for everybody. Um, you, you are doing them really light. These these are good. Okay, thank you. But that's what makes them. So when you're putting shadows on something white, even a cloud too. The same with a cloud. Uh -huh. like you see the shadows up in here, you guys. So that's that's what I'm talking about. They're they have to be light, or it doesn't look like they're on white. So, well, this looks. Look at. I didn't even look at this. Wow, you got to be proud of this area. You meant to. You caked up the little. Uh -huh. you, you caked it up right on right around here. That looks really uh, 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 correct. <laughs> Thank you. I just do the you know the lettering uh, with the shadow cast shadow see. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, just it just has a really wonderful yeah. quality to it. I love the way you handled the trees. Yeah, they would all be you know maybe browner, huh? Okay. That's great. Looks really light. Because mm -hmm. there's probably snow on all these trees, yeah. Love it, love it. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Okay. Thanks okay. For, uh, and we have for Charlotte. It. Charlotte again. Okay. Okay. Wow, you went you went more for the fall colors, huh? I guess because well, it is fall, right? That's what the picture looks like with a lot of oranges and yellows in it. Yeah. See, isn't that great? Look, we. I I'm looking at mine. Mine looks like spring. Yours looks like fall. Henry looks like winter. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Wow. Well, hmm. I did too. I did a small one too. Hmm. All right. Um, yeah, so the now, so what you did was you, you, by putting these dark in the background, it really showed off the cabin more. I kind of wish I would do that. I, I should have done that too. Yeah, well, the cabin is what it's all about. Yeah. Yep, and you got all this. This is just great. A few little. That's a nice little shappy painting. Yeah. I love I love a good shack. <laughs> I could probably turn it into a winter scene by throwing snow on it. <laughs> now I guess uh, if I'm going to be picky here, um, what do you think of maybe this being in shadow? Well, I thought of that, but then it just kind of it's not as sparkly as I wanted it to be. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, so. I don't think it looks any better with that on there, but it has, you're right, it does have more sparkle. And I like how you left that light, that light up on the dark background here, and then you go up here with something darker on a light background. Yeah, well the trees, I didn't want them to be so specific because it's about the cabin. Yeah. Yep. And I have a variety of Chinese brushes that I use from China, so mm -hmm. kind of Thing. Did you go to China to get them? No, I ordered them a long, long time ago, and um, I don't like the sketchy little dot situation with a watercolor, unless yeah. I'm doing oil. Uh huh. So I'd rather have kind of large washes or large wash areas than little yep. dot, dot dots here and there. Yeah. But anyway, it's fun to paint with you. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I did a small one too that's kind of interesting. Oh, good. Um, I don't know what to say. It looks, it looks fantastic. A happy, happy painting. I just like all the red in it. Yeah. I know, I can't stay out of the color. It's, that's the thing about painting it. 
you know, I wouldn't want to do any more to this. This is the kind of painting where I would say, the only thing I could say about this painting is do another one. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of doing all it can do and that's all it needs to do. It, it's, it's wonderful. And well, Peter, um, as long as you're going to paint, you might as well paint. Yeah. 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 But what I was also going to say is, if you're wanting something more out of a painting, and it, but you don't want to like ruin the painting you're already doing, the thing to do is do another one. I know. I thought of doing one with a like yours, kind of a you know softer winter scene. So I may do another one that way because I liked Henry's quite a bit. Yeah. See what happens when you take a class. You go, hey, I got to try that. I know. You know. So there's just all these. Where did this painting come from? The picture? Yeah. Oh, I just got it off that upsplash. I don't know whether we can ever show this art, this type of painting. No, those are those are um, free. Uh, what are they called? Royalty free or copyright free? Okay, so we can show work somewhere. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It says on there that the that the um, the photographer would like acknowledgement that they did it so somewhere like if you were going to publish it let's say we did it like i did an illustration in a magazine they, they would like you to include their name and what they what they mean is you don't have to but it's the prudent thing to do and then also um i'm just um, curious because i show in galleries so i just didn't know what they yeah should. yeah yeah I, I i i got it from upslash and then the other thing is, is it also says on there that you can donate to the to the um, photographer. It says right on there you can donate to them. So great. Um, I think that you know if you were going to sell it or something like that, That's I, I think some sort of uh, tip of the cap would be for, really nice to the person. Okay. Thank you. Nice work. Thank you. As usual. Hey, hey. Let's check it out. <laughs> we always get that dark shadow over the side, huh? Let's see. Looks like a shadow right here. Maybe. I don't know why that happens. Let's see. Okay, Francis, let's see what we got going here now. Nice color. Darn nice values. It looks like we just haven't got to the shadows yet. I mean, we got this shadow in there. I might go a little darker with that, which is just fine. You can go over what you have. Um, I'm thinking this value right here is a, a little darker so we can get yeah. something something back down over here around so it really separates from the light right now they're they're too close okay they don't really separate enough so yeah just just like that i think would be fine uh now when, when you're putting on the 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 strokes for the trees. <laughs> yeah. What I try to do is I just I use I get my my brush. Here it is. I don't know if you can see my page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I spread the bristles like that a little bit. Okay. And and um, when I go over it, I let the I let the strokes crisscross each other, crisscross, and I go like an X. Okay. And. And that'll give you, you know, less linear edge, linear, linear edge, less lineage, and um, more overlapping, kind of a brushy look. Okay. And you can go right over what you have. I mean, it, it's yeah. not like, yeah. Okay. And then, of course, I, I think I would hit, hit a darker shadow over. Right now, they're pretty much the same. Yeah. So on the shadow side, even though it is lighter, I would hit a nice, a nice good shadow under there, a nice one in here. 
gets gets pretty dark right up in there, and then it just sort of fades out into a lighter shadow. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then something. Uh, maybe something in here. That's that's pretty dark. I don't really have anything. Let's see. If I got a brown. I've got a brown, folks. There we go. Something like that. Okay, I see. And I think we're looking pretty good. That this this looks good. Yeah, just just I think it's just contrast. Colors are good, and all of that. It, it's so it, basically it, it's a painting that's not quite finished. That's all. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Even this side would be in shadow too, a little bit, a little darker. I just glaze blue over that because a lot of times I'm thinking that the sky might influence that color. So, okay, I'll all see. right, all right. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. There's Phoebe. All right. <laughs> well, look at look at the granular effect. Wow. Look at That's that. my question. Why am I getting alligator skin? Oh, you don't like it? Um, I can't seem to get away from it. I know ultramarine. I wonder if it's the paper I'm using. It's partially the paper. Are you using a rough paper? Uh, it's Arches Cold Press, 140 pound. I'm, oh, okay. Yeah. So it's just what I'm using. Um, it's. The ultramarine will definitely granulate on you. But so, yours didn't do it. Um, it is. I think, is yours, what size are you working? Well, that may be, I think I'm working on the top. The back of it is much more bumpy than the side yeah. I'm working on. It might be old. It's a couple of years old. Well, that, that's, paper should be, should be a problem after a couple of years. But sometimes when it's been sitting for decades or something, it can, that sizing can get all messed up. Yeah, okay. You know, now, I'm, I'm using the ultramarine made by this company, and it could be that. Oh, that's a really good point. I'm using Daniel Smith. Yeah, they, they uh, Daniel Smith is big on the granulation. You know, I a lot of artists really love that granulation. Mine is granulating, by the way. Maybe I'm not, mine, you know, I did mine pretty big, so maybe, maybe yeah, yours mine's is... not that big. Mine's almost like a, uh, you know, thumb, not thumbnail, but it's yeah, by six or something. It's yeah, got... mine's, mine's like four times your size. Ah. Uh, so that... that's why you're not seeing the granulation as much. And that's why mine looks like a chocolate box. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean like a chocolate box? <laughs> it's a... It's a British pejorative term for oh. paintings that look, you know, twee. Uh, you know, my it looks background like a chocolate makes box. Make your pardon. It looks like a chocolate box. Yes. Chocolate good. Um. Well, yeah, I know. I prefer the granulation. So I mean, uh, I love I love any of the natural effects. So they say that some colors have are, are stains. Like your your Prussian blue is a stain, right? Whereas your ultramarine is a grain, and so you'll get that granulation with the ultramarine. Some color, but usually earth colors like uh, you know any umber or in those areas tend to be real grainy. Yeah, but it also it could also um, the manufacturer they'll use different colors to get to get the same color and. And I don't know why, but they might use uh, different chemicals. All I know is uh, Brenda Swenson is really big on all these grain, grains. Yeah. And the granulation. And um, and she uses exclusively Daniels. Well, I don't know if she only uses them, but I, I think they, they, uh, they give her paint. So. Yeah. Well, maybe I, I'll try some others because this is yeah. amazing. The other thing that might be causing it, I, I have no idea. Um, 
I mean, all my paints right now, I'm, I haven't set up the way I want to. So they're in a sketching, you know, urban sketchers folding palette that's quite small, you know, like this. Wait yeah. a second, where are you? Oh, ah, right I can't help there. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. I'm filming. losing you all in the background. Yeah, there okay. You. There it is. Yeah, I see it. I see it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, maybe it's be and they've been in there a long time is maybe it's because they're old and I don't uh, somebody I heard said oh you would they would never spray and I spray my paints to reactivate them they would never spray to why? reactivate the paint why wouldn't you spray to reactivate paint she said um, what is it that's put in them the uh, What's the what's the binder? The gum arabic. Yes, the gum. Oh, she said it would ruin the gum arabic or you know destroy it or something. I don't uh, know. That doesn't make any sense at all. Okay, good. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I hate to I hate to be so like, but I can't even see the sense in that at all. Um, okay, thank you. Because if you just added water from your brush or something, it would do the right. same thing. Right. I don't. I, well. Never heard that one before, but I love it. Enough te enough material questions. I'm sorry. En enough enough uh, shop talk. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, this is the first time, and I have to thank Henry and you. This is the first time I tried um, the General Wang brush. Oh, wow. Yeah. What, a, what a change. What a, you know, yeah. I need some practice, but what fun. Yeah, you, you, it's like a Ferrari. You got to, you got to, you know, it wants to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you like it. Oh, I do. It's so... Thank you. Thank you. China, China's had this stuff worked out for a long, long, long time. Good point. <laughs> it's a handmade. Yeah. Still good, good, good point. Good point. No pun intended. Huh. Yeah. No. Um, okay. Yeah. So I'm looking at maybe a little more shadow uh -huh. on this side. Uh-huh. All this. Although I love your window right there. That's perfect. I, fr I was going to put a little stuff on my window, and I never did. I cheated. I used cerulean. I think it's cerulean. Chromium. Um, I have to. I have to get to your yeah. minimum palette. The cerulean blue. You could just use that for your green blue. That works great. So instead, really? of, if you if you use cerulean blue instead of Prussian blue, you can totally change those two. You could also use thalo blue. I'm sorry, you don't have to I use Prussian. I misspoke. I never remember what I've got here. Um, it's cobalt turquoise light. Okay, so that would be a green blue. Right, but it's and a that it's works. A, it's a convenient one. I'm not. I'm not being true to your palette. Co cobalt turquoise light. I love it. I just love the names. I know. Purple periwinkle from Paris. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, Okay, yeah, some shadows. I think that's what we're looking for. Remember, the, the cabin would create a shadow over all this. Yeah. More, yeah. A little bit more. And I, I, I'm using black. I probably would use something more like a, in a, a bluer. I think your cobalt, your cobalt turquoise peacock <laughs> would work really good in there. And, uh, Impression. Yeah. Right. Well, now, when, when, when we put that shadow next to it, look how it pops your window out. Wow. Yeah. So it just needs a touch of a little bit in there. All right. Uh, I think everything, you know, it looks it looks really minimal. If you want to try a tree. Yes. No, I will. I I would. I just give it to that general weighing brush. Let me tell you, it'll it'll uh, make you happy. What? I want to practice a little bit on another piece of paper first. <coughs> Excuse me. What is the what? Um, there was a black stallion. Is it literally called black stallion? Oh, no, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to change that it's, name. It was a black, a black sable. sable. Yeah, uh, we we'll, we'll, we can add that to uh, nickname. <laughs> it's just the nickname. Will you yeah. Add that to the chat. You guys have been going at this a long time and know the shorthand for your brushes. Okay. I'll put the link at uh, the chat. Okay. <laughs> I know. 
Maybe, um, maybe Henry can put those in the chat so we can all. Oh know what yeah, that uh, the combination rabbit combination and uh, the black sable. Yeah. Yeah, there's a rabbit combination. Okay. Yeah. I uh, that's my friend now. I like the the black stallion is my friend, but boy, let me tell you what. I'm gonna have to play with this rabbit combination more. Okay. I I have one more question for the yeah. um, geeky part of stuff. Uh, I we Geek have, out. We've had yeah. a moth infestation. Is there anything that anybody uses to keep oh. the moth? They've taken to a cup. They've ruined a couple of sables. Oh, they'll, I they'll mean, probably we have a them. serious infestation that we. I have to get rid of a wool rug because of it. Do you, what do you think, Henry? Pardon me? Uh, I didn't get the question, sorry. She said, she said, will moths affect your brush? Will moths eat the brush? Oh, if you uh, if you don't use it for a long time. I, I don't yeah. see... Um, yeah, sometimes it, it does. So but it, they've gotten to... Do, what, do, you, do you use anything? The mo yeah. There's a kind of a smell uh, peel, moss uh, something. Must peel or I don't know. Uh, it, put them in a cedar chest. Yeah, if yeah. you put it in a in a in a in a sealed box with that be uh, that kind of uh, you you can get from any grocery. I think it's a moss uh, ball ball right. Moss balls. Yeah. Moss balls. Yeah. You know, I had a moth infestation in Big Bear where they came throughout the whole cabin and all throughout Big Bear, and I went down and a woman made me a lavender sage with all kinds of these um, essential oil as a spray and I sprayed it all around and the, all the moths left. Wow. Wow. But everybody was had moths in their house. It was just an infestation. I, I, I have, we have a serious infestation. I would love to- and Herbs, herbs, would, um, herbs oh, got yeah. rid of it. And she made me a little bag of herbs for all my windows. I'd have oh, to wow. get the name of what she stuck in this. Rosemary. Right. Uh, I will, who's speaking? So I'll email Oh, you. this is Charsig. Okay, thank you. You can Google me. I have a website, Charsig, C-H-A-R-C-E-E. -E. Thank you. I'll try to get the contents. Could you could maybe, maybe put it that in the chat. Could you, <laughs> yeah, could you, could you feel like it. It's like essential oils and some kind of spray. It was amazing. Oh, I'll see what I can find. I've never okay. Had okay. Well, anyway, I think we're looking pretty good here. You know, maybe some fence things here, some bridge yeah. things if you like. Little details. Yeah. Finish um, it. In other words. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just looks like you got a good lay-in going there. Just throwing some shadows play with some some of your brush effects and I think we're in business maybe maybe some darks along the river there right okay and work that's good you. thank you thank you Phoebe all right yeah I, I like I like the geeking out bar by the way geek out all you want everybody Hey, there you go. Okay, Luis. Yep. All right. Nice color. You know what's you know what's cool about this is that, whoa, you've got uh, it's not a red cabin, but it's 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 redder than anything else around there. And and because you have all this green around it, it really jumps forward. I mean. You know, if you use greens and browns and, you know, just, it doesn't jump forward as much. So, that's pretty neat. Thank you. And I could see some darker, darker value in there. I mean, I, I don't have the right, I'll have to use black because I don't have the right color, but see now, if you see how, when we put that down, how this light right here really pops out now. Right, right. So it's it's uh, it's value. It's not color. Your colors are great. It's just darker, which just means you know you need to glaze it. That's all. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have these two big trees right here. They would be casting more shadow down here, darker. And I can see even a touch darker here. Um, okay. Darker. 
Let's see what this looks like. Because you want it kind of distinctly different between the light and the shadow, so. Okay, more contrast. Yeah, what more contrast. To the shadow. And, and use your own judgment on that. I mean, uh, you don't have to put as much as I'm putting. Sometimes, you know, I don't have exactly the right value on this thing. Um, what color would she use for the shadow? Well, I mean, you, you could use green and it would work. My, I love to use something in the blue family and then let it mix with what's already on there. Whoops, let me see. I was trying to... I, I mixed uh, some um, orange and violet to create browns. Yeah. So some of it in the river is, uh -huh. you can see the violet, you know, the, the mauve. Yeah. Um, but depending how much you put of the violet and the orange, you get a nice sort of brownish, warm brownish. Yeah. Now you're talking like a painter there, <laughs> like a warm brownish, <laughs> Be because there's really no names. I mean, I'm sure we could give them names. We could call it a uh, uh, ruddy shack rust color, <laughs> but no, I mean, so anyway, uh, what I'll do is I'll tend to glaze this down with a blue because I know I've already got this green underneath and that's gonna mix with it. Okay. You're gonna see right through the, the blue into that color, so. Okay, I'm gonna try that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now, if you use uh, the Prussian blue, it'll look a little greener. If you use the ultramarine blue, it'll look a little bit, uh, Bluer? No, yeah. it looked a little bit. Uh, uh, for glaze, I should. Uh, Violeter. Yeah. Sorry, for the glaze, I should water it down. Whatever I use, I should water it down quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You want to water it down because you want to be able to see through it. Right. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, what most people do is they water it down too much and then they have to go over it again and then they have to go over it again and then they have, you know. So. And that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you have to go over it three or four times. Just remember the golden rule, and that is if you go over it when when it's still wet underneath or even damp, it'll start picking up the color underneath, and then you'll get the mush. So if yeah. you want that beautiful glazed look, make sure it's dry. And that's why I just, I just hit it with a hairdryer or lay it out in the sun. Mm -hmm. This time of year, I probably hit it out with a hairdryer. So. Cool getting that bite in the air you notice everybody yeah, like we're getting that that chill that fall chill see we get seasons here <laughs> not very much but we get them so yeah anyway see now I would probably use blue on the um, on the shadows of this because I think it looks better than black but I, I this won't get dark enough you know so maybe if I yeah yeah for me to get things darker, the challenge is I like to show some texture and when yeah. I, I darken, sometimes it's it gets too flat and it's always a trade off. Yes, it is. It is. Okay. It is. And it, it's a sacrifice. So you, you gotta, you gotta say, you know, if I like what I have, I'm just gonna leave it uh -huh. you know? or or I need more and I'm gonna just sacrifice what I have to get the, the value. It really needs something in here, contrast or whatever. So and those, those are the, the questions. Like I say, it's all just choices, but it's, it's you, you know, you're the decision maker. So you have to, um, make those, make those decisions. So now, I mean, yeah, I, I know there's something in there that you don't have to put the bridge in there or whatever, but I, I usually throw something dark at the base of, of all this brush and stuff that was back here, maybe. Okay. I threw just a touch of blue in there just to kind of ground things because these would all be casting little shadows, but it's all broken up by the brush. So I just kind of nestled something in there as well. Uh, your background, this, this looks great. This, the way you handle the trees looks great. I usually have problems with those. 
Yeah, it's a good tree lines is not easy. You think it would be, and then good artists make it look so easy. And that's because they've messed up on a whole lot of them. And there's, believe me, there's there's no artist out there that hasn't messed up on a whole lot of them. Like I said, the difference between uh, an amateur and a professional usually is the professional has had a lot more experience. That's all. Not that they don't make those mistakes. Okay. Okay. All right. I like your red cabin. That's good. Really? <laughs> yeah, I like it. I thought it looked too neat, not uh, no, run like enough. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Katie. There you are. All right. We got now. You you have a lot of contrast. I keep thinking there's light coming in from my uh, my window onto my monitor, but then you got light on your. Uh, you, you got these little lights on there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's Trick through me. the blinds. It's through the blinds of the window. Yeah, it, it just tricked me a little bit. Okay, let's see. All righty. Now the cast shadows on the ground. Um. Let me make this a little bit there. Like something down there or so, something breaking up. Now what you can do is just, you can just take a little water on this and soften this edge as if there's brush coming up onto the, um, okay. onto that. And you know, so then it, it won't look like it's floating. Okay, that's true. Anything that looks like it's floating, usually there's a shadow, so more like down here maybe. Yeah. Okay. And nice color. I like your little red, yellow, and blue right here. <laughs> <laughs> nice color, nice paint. Your your um, I have actually seen little streams that look like this. They're so. This looks like you can see right into the bottom of it. It's so clear. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll hit little, little trickles, little little trickles around things. Like little here and there. Yeah, I, I didn't do anything with the white, the gouache, because oh. it's totally out of my don't, um, don't do it. my ability to handle. <laughs> well, on the other hand. Um, uh, do it if you want to just experiment and learn, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, listen, I've got enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, if you want to try some of that gouache to light this, that's what I did. I, I lit my side of the building up a little bit more. And that, that'll make this feel like it's more in shadow. Okay. And... And I really like how you took a few of these over over the front there. It really makes this feel like it's in front of this. And see how this feels like it's in front of this because of these shadows you have on the ground and, and on the water, there's shadows on the water. Sometimes they're really hard to see, but you put them in. You, you know, I've painted water so many times and then um, I remember when I was learning water, I kept thinking, am I seeing shadows on there? That I put the, I put a shadow on the water and go, oh my gosh, there it is. Hmm. And then of course I get funny looks from people. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's talking to himself, Ron, hurry. <laughs> um, so then let's see. We got plenty of shadows in there. Oh. Again, with, with the white gouache, if you wanted to, I did some light branches here and there too. Mm -hmm. Those are kind of fun. Yeah, I saw. If you're gonna practice with those, those are kind of fun. You could even throw in that build. Uh, if you do put in the um, window, let it dry and then maybe glaze a little shadow over it or something. Sure. A little blue, kind of blue from the, um, from the sky in there. Okay. Let's see. 
Good colors. As usual, you always have good color. Mm. It's a gift. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. You should you should know. I mean, a lot of people don't have that. They just don't they don't have that ability to just to know what color to pick. Other people just have it. And you That's can learn it. You, there's a lot of skill. Uh, there's there's a lot to um, color that, that you can learn by science. Like, uh, let me tell you, I have a friend, I've t- maybe told you this before, but who's colorblind. And he tells me he sees everything in black and white. Hmm. He does everything by color theory. Um, wow. Everything. And by the way, his values are amazing. He always gets the value, right? Because that's all he sees. So... Um, but but so you, we can learn lots by color theory but some people just have an instinct for color too and uh, it's a nice thing to have some people have an instinct for composition and drawing I mean um, uh, it's another nice little gift so y- you know I, I see this all the time in, in my younger students too. They will, you know, I'll mention that they, you know, you have a real gift in this area and they just kind of, they, got, they kind of front it off like, yeah, but it's no big deal. I mean, I just do this. So you should realize it is a big deal. It's a big deal to people that don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So ni- nice choices of color. Thanks. And your perspective looks pretty darn good. Yep, looks pretty darn good. Good. So something's improving. <laughs> yeah, now, if things start getting mushy, like in this area, that might that might mean maybe you, uh, maybe you came in when it was damp. Mm-hmm. So you'll want to wait for that to completely dry before you glaze in another color. All right. Yeah, wet, wet on wet is a real challenge. Well, well, we'll, we'll keep working on it. I mean, it's it's a it's something every artist should know. <clears throat> Starting a painting wet into wet is a really great thing to do. You get all kinds of things going on really fast. <laughs> all right. So see see around your rocks here. I might. I might fuzz the edges a little bit. Okay. Just, just take. Um, you could again with the white. You could do. You could dry brush that edge. You could also dry brush it with that lemon yellow. Mm-hmm. Just, just to kind of. When we when we have these hard outlines like this, just just take a little bit of fuzzy. Yeah. So dry brushing works great. So, that's my favorite. Great. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Rob. Thanks, Rob. Mm-hmm. Okay, now we got Ethel. Okay, Ethel. Okay. Well, you're, now your perspective is a little different, but I, I you, you know, you, you, we're looking. Yeah, I put it off the page. Yeah, it's it's a little flatter. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I really like it. Uh, I like your perspective. Oh, thank you. Uh, I just, I was just noticing, wow, you, you, uh, you really interpreted it and changed it. No, I mean, I, I think that's the reason to paint. I mean, to honestly, I think it's a great, I think it's a better idea just to interpret what you're seeing rather than just copy it, you know. But this is great, great drafting. I mean, you're. Thank you. It kept getting too big or too small, or I couldn't quite. But I, I just moved the perspective right out of the uh-huh. way. <laughs> so. Yeah. But I wanted to be as simple as I could, but I'm, I don't do simple well. See this tree line right here? Uh huh. I love it. You know, you, that's what that's what I'm talking about about being simple. Because everybody knows what it is. So there's no reason to put every darn tree in there and everybody, but people will do that. Now you put a little definition into this tree in there and that's, of course, this, this mountain range is closer than this one, but, um, and it has a little more definition, but it doesn't have too much. I think you did the simple thing really well. Thank you. 
he should be he should be happy about that. I mean, that's that's not easy to do in watercolor. It's so easy to get obsessed with, you know, planks, wood planks. We got to get every little plank. <laughs> no. Um, right, and especially when the, the tree line doesn't even. Have, it's just a supporting thing. It's, it's support for your piece. It's not a, an actual big player. Like the big player here is this, and the secondary player would be this. Mm -hmm. They have the main main detail. Here. Looks like third player are these rocks right here. Little rock pile. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of played with those a little more too. <laughs> You know, one thing I like to do is just tuck some real good darks down in the nooks and crannies like that, right? You know, maybe maybe something. Yeah. And then maybe maybe throw in a couple of uh, weeds and things around them. Oh yeah, I did. I actually put some in. Yeah. But not many. What about under the rocks? That's. Yeah. See now, if you if you. See now, if I hit this dark under the rock, it just looks like it's sitting on dirt or something. Ah. Okay. So we need we need to throw in some weeds and stuff over that, but you'll still see little peeps, little peeps right. of uh, dark coming through. Okay. So yeah, I wouldn't mind uh, maybe, maybe smacking a couple of really good darks down at the base of things and in the crannies of things, like in the air, and then throw in yourself some good some good. Uh, Weeds. <laughs> yeah. Some yeah. weeds and stuff around there. Oh, okay. That kind of hooks in there. I might do the same thing with this. Some of these little areas. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, only if you want to. Same with this, too. I might throw in a couple of little weeds over this. Oh, yeah. That was, that was just kind of lay there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it just needs a little, a little, little stuff in front of it. They do that. They just need to be nestled in. Yeah. You, you got to tuck it in. And then any, any sort of other information that you can leave it out or, you know, a little bridge and all that stuff can be kind of fun. Yeah. I didn't, so, I kind of left that one out. Yeah. But uh, on the left, on, under the, the orange part, I did darken, put some weedy kind of dark. Yeah. So. All right. I think thank it looks you. great. Oh, thank you. Nice looking piece. Good wasn't values quite, too. Yeah, wasn't quite shabby enough, but it's working. All right, thank you. You're welcome. You want you want more of a shabby shack? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay. And it, it, the shabbiness will come from the edges, by the way. <clears throat> okay. So. And, oh, uh, you, mine. I'm Jane. Yeah, Jane. Um, I have a second one. The tree is a little different, but. Oh, you you give me another one. Let's see where it is. Number two. Old melt number two. I see it up there. There it is. I got it. Yeah, it's just got a little more of the painting, and I put a little. Okay. Uh, okay. And now. If you also wanted your shack to look a little more shabby, <laughs> shabby yeah. shack, what you could do is just, see how straight your edge is here? Just kind of get in and crick it up a little bit, you know? Right, kinda good idea, a little bit. yeah. And one thing that can be easily easily remedied here is that you, if you'll notice this side's going down to here, and then this side's going up over there. Right. So they'll never meet anywhere in space. <laughs> So what you do is you just take a little of this green up here. Yeah. And um, and to this point right there, just 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 let just we'll just clip off this corner a little bit. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Much better. We'll just yeah, just something like that. And then yeah. of course I would rickety rickety up the edges. This down here looks great. You know. It's a rickety old thing. You know, wow, um, your water looks like it has little reflections in it. 
the way you painted it, I didn't think about that. I probably should have hit some reflections in the water. Why didn't I do that? I guess the water looks kind of blurry, but I think that would have been a great idea. As you say, the water did it. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't yeah. terribly intentional. <laughs> now, here's the, here's the thing. The water did it, but you looked at it and said, it looks great. In other words, somebody else would have looked at that and goes, you know what, it doesn't look quite correct, so I'm going to do it over, and, and, and they'll, they'll mess it all up. Mm -hmm. So it's two things. It's First of all, it's the water doing it, and the second thing, it's you leaving it alone. Right. Yeah. So much of watercolor painting isn't what you do, it's what you don't do, you know? Right. <laughs> so uh, nice looking shadows coming down the hill. I might get a little bit darker with this back here. Mm -hmm. Little bit here and there. I can see another glaze in there. This looks great. Mm -hmm. um, let's see what else. This looks great. It does look a little straight though. I mean, yeah. I, I can see, you know, maybe going back and forth with it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just what happens is that, you know, we're, we're looking, think of it just like a path. And on a path, you'll get little ins and outs and ins and outs. So, yeah. And here too, this 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 one looks pretty good. I know. I see you broke it up with that one and broke it up with this one. And uh, I can see a little more breakage right there. And I don't know. I mean, I think it looks great without a bridge. So it's up to you. I think it looks just great without a bridge. But it's up to you if you want to put in anything else and. Mm -hmm. stuff. You included so much water back here that I think it looks just great. So I'll leave that up to you. Okay. Um, maybe a little bit of a shadow in the background there. Yeah, of course. Might cast, if they're up that high, they might cast little shadows onto the, even mm -hmm. this too. These two. He's got a nice looking shadow right there. I think that looks great. And we talked about before, maybe taking some some little weeds here and there and just kind of bringing it over here and there once in a while. Mm -hmm. if, if things like, like, let's see this rock right here, over here. Um, if it's looking like really like a hard edge right there, then, or, or if things feel like they're beginning to look like they're floating or something like that. Sometimes it's just softening the edge a little bit. Sometimes it's it's taking a couple of little blades of grass over things. Mm -hmm. About here. Uh, by the way, your handling of this uh, tree line right here looks magnificent in the background. Look at that. <laughs> it's a great little it's a great little backdrop for your tree here in the foreground. Uh huh. Yeah. It's simple too, right? Yeah. Well, it was Should fun. Be. You know, my lighter trees they almost look like there's a fog bank around them, rather than. Okay, so you remember how we did this? I, I just kind of laid my brush down flat. Yeah. I laid that down. You right. could just do the same thing this way. Yeah, I think the water that area was too wet, and I couldn't get it to uh, drip down. Yeah. So you so you just cut some of this color and value back into this. Right. And you'll get that, you'll get that edge. Yeah. Is no problem. Okay, I think it's looking pretty darn good. Well, thank you. It was a fun, fun painting. Good, I'm glad. I know, nothing like a barn, a, a barn in a field or a barn anywhere. <laughs> right. Okay, Michelle. All right, gleaming colors, whoo. I yeah, because it, it does. I mean, that feels so spring with that that yellowy, that yellowy green. And then my favorite thing to do is to um, pull in, like you did. You threw in the green, and then you come over the top with these darks. I'm thinking that's a little bright up there, so I think I'm gonna glaze over that because my eye seems to go up into that corner but what do you think um well i don't hate it that's for sure that's personally okay. no, i'll just leave that up to you I, I think 
It looks fine to me. Okay. But if you think it's detri- I mean, it does attract a lot of attention, but I, I, I love looking at it, so. <laughs> it, it looks fine to me. Yeah, it looks fine to me. Yeah. <laughs> now, as a design decision, um, see how everybody, see how she's taking these up and over? Right. And up and over here? So that that's called overlapping to create depth. And that's just a basic design decision. That's a good decision. Look at all the depth they're getting out of it. Wow. You know, another great thing you did here is you put the blue on the water. That really feels reflective. Very reflective. I wish I would have thought of that. Darn it. I think my, so on my building, it, it just doesn't feel right. I think I drew it right, and then when I went to paint it, it's like I lost my lines, but is that? The, is the perspective painted? looks correct. Does it? Okay. That so it's not a perspective off. thing. Maybe you need to rickety up a little bit, kind of these, these hard edges. I don't know. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe there's moss growing on and algae and lichen and all kinds of weird stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, and I'll throw some of that green on there. Uh, now, now, by adding the white in the background, you're getting these grays. It's very effective because it makes that feel further away than the orange here. And then, you know, the orange doesn't feel like it's jumping up in the foreground either because you put this little, little bit of like a white wash on it. And that's a great move. Your, your trees here in the foreground overlapping the background there again. That's a great move. I may have to rip you off. Please do. And Nice tree, by the way. Nice looking tree right here. The way you did the shadows Thanks. on it. Thanks. Yeah. That's, Great tree. I, I um, I'm I'm trying to make things look more watercolor instead of so gouache, and I and I end up using gouache anyway. But that one, I felt like, oh, okay, that's a watercolor tree right there. <laughs> So. Well, I mean, just so you know, I mean, I love gouache. I love the look of gouache, too. So, I mean, I'm, I don't have a preference between watercolor and gouache. All I know is that um, if I want watercolor effects, I'll go transparent. If I want gouache effects, so I'm, I'm open to anything you want to do. I So I don't have any problem with your painting at all. So I really I, like it. I, it's, a, it's a challenge. It's probably what I'm saying. So I want to be able to choose. And so yeah. it's sometimes the painting feels like it drives me towards gouache or really honestly, I end up painting like an oil painter, which is what gouache ends up being. What's wrong with that? No, nothing, that? Not, nothing wrong with it. I just want to be able to make yeah. the choice. Okay. In other words, without, 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 you know, it's like, okay, yeah. I, want, I want to choose how this looks not be dissatisfied with it so I end up doing something that's familiar. That's all. But it's, it's some of it's right. working. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's something right there. Okay. That tells me, you know, that that maybe we need to button down with you on the uh, watercolor effect thing. You know. Right. Like, I, you know, in one sense, I don't have any problem with the um, with the use of gouache, but at the other, on the other sense, uh, you know, you're wanting to learn more about it, so then let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get and, totally transparent. And, and again, how would you do like those those lights? And I guess you would scrape back into it when it's wet, right? That's how you would you would pull those lights out, like the bushes in the front and the and the light. Um, yeah, you can scrape back and, into it. Scrape back um, into it. I can't see me paving around it either. That's not. Yeah. You know, I can't see me doing that, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. So some people could, you could, you could paint around it. We, we could have, we, what we, maybe what we, the thing is, is maybe you didn't know you were going to put that in before we did it because, um, what you could have done is in the, in the drawing in the beginning, 
we could have drawn like a like a like a bush right there and then you just paint around it yeah yeah and cut back into it with yeah the you gun. cut back into yeah. it exactly we could have done okay. that i um i didn't i didn't even know so if you if you want to throw it in afterwards you pretty much have to do it opaquely or you can try rubbing it out and see if you can get it that way you, you could rub it out but it, to do to do it exactly right, you got you got to nail the drawing. I do a lot of I do a lot of putting things in as I go. I don't have my drawing absolutely perfectly worked out because I like the freedom of being able to do that. So um, some people have every single part of the thing worked out before they even try, and there's a lot of good things about that. So yeah, yeah, so, yeah. It just takes more planning. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Rob. You're welcome. Nice piece. Thanks. You really get that luminous spring feeling to it. All right. Hey, Shelly. Hi, Rob. I like saying Shelly. I have a cousin named my, my cousin Shelly. <laughs> Every time I say Shelly, I always think of my cousin. <laughs> Kind of grew up with her. Um, all right. A lot of contrast over here. Let's see. Like too That's much good. contrast, I'm afraid. Kind of I a moved cool. The sun. What was that? I moved the sun. You moved the sun? Yeah. So we catch the front of that thing, uh, the cabin. <laughs> right. Right. You you hit it hard there. I like that. I like that. I and mean, in my uh, in my comps, I, I got lighter. You know, I might even come back and really slam those lights a little harder. Uh, but so that, would that's, you glaze that's it down? What was that? Would you just glaze that down a little bit so that it drops back? The uh, this? Yeah. You could, yeah. I mean, you could glaze that down with maybe some brown or something. I don't know. That's probably too much. I don't know. Maybe, that, maybe that's okay. I yeah. think it's too much contrast back there. Yeah, that, see, that already looks better, I think. And so there's that issue. And then it, if it gets too dark, you can just pump a little bit more gouache back into it. Mm -hmm totally up to you um look at the way she did this bank line everybody look at that that's so natural look at that very and looks like you just used the edge of your brush and got that kind of a dry brush look right there yeah yeah i'm, I'm seriously considering general wang but yeah. uh, i tried to get what i could out of the brush i <laughs> <laughs> I think it's General Wong. I, 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 I'd say it wrong. I'm sorry. We have people in this class that know how to say it, right? I'm sorry if I said it incorrectly. <laughs> but I, I take that out for a sec because I have a question about that. You just, um, I was remembering from our lesson. Yeah. Sergeant. Yeah. Yeah. That it kicked up some light underneath the eave there rather than going dark oh so maybe do you see do you see there? where you were yeah, right there i i yeah. have some light in there instead of the dark yeah do you see it there yeah i like it i like it. i see it yeah that works for me a little reflected light in there sure you could even get some in here in the wagon wheel mm -hmm. could be some back here um, you know, I liked it dark under here, but the reason it's lighter down here is because the blue, uh, the blue sky is coming in. So see, the reason it's dark up here is because the, the blue sky doesn't get the influence of this color, but it does get the influence of down here. So we, I could even see a little bit more light. And if you keep it in the cool flame, it doesn't have to be blue. But if you keep it in the cool family, it'll be, it'll feel like shadow, mm -hmm. you know, but oftentimes reflected lights that are beat. Now what's happening here, 
is you have the main light coming back, hitting this stuff and bouncing back up into there. So, boom, and then it gets back up into it. And that's why we get that reflected light. You could even argue maybe you catch a little bit up into there. I don't know. Maybe there, maybe there, maybe you'd catch a little bit up in here underneath this even. I could certainly see an argument for that. Left it a little white, little rickety edge there. I like that, yeah. And then you could certainly glaze it if you want or not. But yeah, the, uh, that's the way. Now it could also be that the light hit the top of the wagon wheel or the, the, the water wheel here. You know, the yeah. came down, boom, and, and then that. And even if it doesn't, sometimes I'll go, well, it could happen. <laughs> yeah. And I just put it in there anyway. All right. We've got a good looking piece here. I think, um, let's see. So if you get something that feels like it's floating, maybe hit a little bit of a shadow in there. Yeah, okay. And then I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I think I'm. I think in mine. I think I'm going to go back and throw in the reflection in the water and see what happens. We'll see. And even this might throw in a little bit of a reflection. I don't see it in the water though, but we'll see. Make it up. Okay. By the way, uh, the way you handled this background is just perfect. Isn't that? This is just perfect. You don't have to do any more. Your sky is just perfect. I mean, I didn't say anything about those little areas, but they're, they don't have to be any more than that. Well, that, this is the closest I've gotten to a okay wet and wet for me. Yeah. So thank you for helping us with keeping yeah. us honest and working on that. <laughs> We're going to keep doing them too. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. There's Jane. We're at Daryl now. Hey, Daryl. Let's see. Yes, sir, here. All right, what we got here now. Um, Needs more color saturation, right, in the front, greens. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would definitely hit something kind of yellowy, yellowy green up yeah. in here. Over there, too. What kind of paper are you working on? I put I put a little more color in the rocks too, and more shadows. I have my tree leaning because I realize it's right in the middle of the painting, so yeah. I've got it leaning over so it doesn't. It's, it's dead center in the painting. That's why oh, I, I see. Like the, uh, you know, yeah. So, you know, sometimes when I do that. Uh, I'll realize that later too and what I'll do is I'll come back with a little counter like a little counter tree whoops I'll make this a little bit bigger here like a, like a counter tree over here <laughs> oh you know, that's a great idea Rob yeah. thanks just to just to counter that angle yes yes and I won't make them I won't make them exactly the same size either I'll make maybe this one be smaller or something but just to you see how it almost feels like it's holding this guy up? Let me hold you up there. Yeah, yeah that helps already. Yeah, a little bit. Looks like yeah. a TP. I look for, yeah, I look for counters. Okay. And so I can see a little more color in your shack. So it's all in the browns. So how about we glaze a little bit of blue into it? Okay. Maybe into the shadows here. Yeah. I mean, maybe a little darker than that, but just, just something. Yeah, put, some, put some cool colors in there, yeah. Throw some blue, yeah. Yeah, just, just to break up, yeah, that's all. And I'll throw a little brush and blue in there. Yeah, yeah, brush and blue would be nice. And, and then, then I'll just, more color, more, bring up, bring up the green and yellows a little bit in the front. Yeah. And, you know, more cut. No more sh shading on the rocks. You're reading my mind. <laughs> I don't know, you know, this, the, the trees on the left side, maybe, I don't know if that should be darker or what. You know, uh, 
It looks to me like you didn't want to emphasize this tree, and so you you didn't make it darker. I, I, it reads as a tree. It doesn't need to be darker. It could be darker if you want it to be, but um, I, I think it's just fine the way it is. I, I sort of like the abstract quality to it, the way you, you just kind of lost and found it. I, I like that, so I don't have a problem with that. Um, I don't know if there should be blue in the stream. I don't see blue in the stream, but I mean, you know, I guess if it's a stream, there, there could be a little blue in there. You, yeah, you could hit a little reflections in there. So, it's up to you. Any if veterans, you do I, any veterans for your service? Any vets in our group? I would hit some white in there. If, if you do want to hit blue in there, what I would do is hit white in there first, let it dry completely, and then come back over it with, with a little bit of... Blue. Yeah, it won't be too dirty if I don't, huh? Yeah, just a little bit. Here and there, not very much. Yeah, if you think it needs it, maybe maybe I won't even put blue on. Just brush some blue in the cabin. Yeah. And brighten up the greens in the foreground. Yeah. And then, you know, put another tree going the, up, you know, the other direction, like you yeah. said, a smaller tree, yeah. Smaller tree going the other way. That don't, that don't, that don't help at all. That'll do it. I think that'll do it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And I've got. Let's see. Let me go up here. There's Debbie. Okay. Hey, Debbie. Let's see what we got here. Hi, Rob. All right, a nice lay in. I love the, the lavender you have in the sky. It's a great move. It's really just ultramarine blue, actually. <laughs> looks looks like something swam up in there and got it. Yeah, <clears> maybe some of your warm That's my messy palette. <clears throat> that looks good. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the um, <clears throat> and the house. What I might do with the house? Excuse me, I have to clear my throat here. Sure. Um, is see how you have this line here going that direction right yeah and I can see your line up there so what I would do is just take this color in the background and just just emphasize it a little bit more just so it sits down maybe a little mm -hmm. more too much. I don't know. So there's a little more value um, contrast. Yeah, a little contrast, but also it cr corrects the perspective a little right. bit because these these two lines um, from the top. Yeah, I made them parallel. That was the problem. Yeah, they'll, they'll meet in space somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So it's some, something like that. And it's a it's a really easy fix to just just you just take that background value and just pull it down into it. I like the idea of putting some blues in the water just to kind of relate it more to the sky. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, if you do that, I would just dry brush in some white here and there, wherever you like, just little touches here and there, and then. And then just glaze in a touch of blue. Yeah, I think that would definitely help. It helps the composition because honestly, I have pretty much a straight shot of that water. It isn't really looking very natural. It looks more like a paved path or something. So then let's think about the edges. Right. The outside edges that just kind of come in and out, in and out. 
Yeah. You just need a little more ins and outs. Yeah. That's easy to cut that back in. That that's a really easy thing to do. <clears throat> um, nice tree, by the way. And now, by the way, just so you know, uh, just for the whole class, uh, let's see. Let me come and clear all this. You see how your tree looks like it's floating right here on the bottom? Yeah. Now, oftentimes, I'll just leave those like that. And the reason why is because it it reminds the viewer that th this is just a stroke. It's just a stroke of paint. And and because I think a lot of times the we we forget to keep reminding e or ourselves. I mean, you know, it depends on who you're doing the painting for. But but I like this. I like to make note of things like that. That very much in like in that you did these trees in the background here. Um, see, they look like little paint strokes that end up feeling like like a tree line. You did the same thing with this. That that is the way of watercolor. Period. I mean, that it's actually the way of painting all together, personally, but especially watercolor because um, I consider watercolor the most natural medium because it's water, <laughs> but um, it does all these water effects. But anyway, so you've heard me before say maybe nestle this in with something at the base and maybe cast a shadow or something like that. I don't know. We sometimes I just like to leave them like that. I love it all beautiful, like a calligraphic stroke the way it is. So I like to make that point once in a while. It's not all about representing representing everything perfectly, you know. Okay. What it is, I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm just hitting a little bit darker shadow. Yeah. Some more contrast, possibly. And. And I think that's it. Oh, that's very, very helpful. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Okay. Good. There's Barbara. this hey oh by the way did everybody I hope everybody got my um, my my little email about the next term when the next term starts and all so yes mm -hmm. just so everyone knows I know you already signed up right away <laughs> that's that's where I reminded me I was like oh yeah I mm -hmm. forgot all that yeah so now um this is what I'm talking about with the See how this is all wet into wet here? And then later on, you came back with something else over the front of it. But you still have this sort of residue from the from the wet into wet, like this too, right back here. You, you did that really nice. Thank you. It was fun. <laughs> fun, it's like this look right here. It does look very, almost like Chinese, you know, Sumi painting because they do this all the time. Like right there, that's so, that's perfect. You can recognize what it, you can see, you, you see what it is, and you see that it's in the foreground because you're, you're using darker values and you're using a little bit more detail in it, but are you still in keeping with the wet in the wet technique? It, it's very nicely done. Okay, now I'd say in your case, now what I would do, because your values look pretty good, I might get a little more brown in your building. Oh yeah. Oh. Want to yeah. feel more wooden. Okay. So, because you have a lot of blue on there, so then I would just, mm -hmm. you know, a little more, a little more brown. Oh. And if that, if that window gets too bright, maybe just take a little shot of blue or something. Mm -hmm. and, you know, whatever. Okay. And brown. I don't think brown. Brown's gonna make it look like the building. Something in the bluish sort of family. That looks ridiculous, but <laughs> <laughs> what can I, do? I put brown over and it blends right in. So anyway, I would drag something a little bit. 
so it doesn't stand out so because right now it's the lightest thing in there um, and I could see a little more saturation and if really pure I would get like you did this with yellow right over here you did mm -hmm. really get, like, get a whole lot of yellow green in the foreground mainly okay and I don't know what do you think do you think this contrast could be a little bit more let's see maybe so I don't know if it needs it I think I did put a little more under the wheel uh, up to the edge. Yes, I, I've done that. Okay. That when you were talking. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. a little bit. <laughs> um, I mean, I think your trees are just fine. They're a little spotty, though. I mean, I think this one is a little more, a little bit better. You know, okay. a little spotty. Should I put some gouache? No, I, I might put a little wash over it though. Oh, okay. Just a harmonizing wash. See, you, you've got so much contrast that it looks like it's um, it's scattered. So if you just take a little bit of like a brownish green or whatever color you use back there, and just mm -hmm. kind of just take a little glaze over it, it'll bring it together. I think I think it'll look better. Oh, okay. What about underneath there? Do you think I should put a, a little glaze? Or just leave it light underneath here. I think it, it that part. I mm -hmm. think um, you know. Look, I think it would look really great if you took this glaze, put it on there, and then took mm -hmm. another glaze over here, and just kind of let them run into each other. So you'll get oh, a, kind of a okay. loose edge right here. So you can do wet into wet right over wet into wet. <laughs> it's called a wet into wet glaze. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you should you should play with it. All right. Yeah. Great. Really easy to do, real fun to do. I call it, you know, uh, in the end of a painting, oftentimes I have to put these harmonizing uh, harmonizing washes over things because I'll have little areas that are scattered mm -hmm. and they need to be brought together a little. So that's that's what the harmonize. That's why they call it a harmonizing wash because it brings things together. Okay, yeah. so it won't wipe out that dry brush look? Uh, not if you just do it once. Okay. You know, just put it down there and then get out before you, before the disaster of the mush comes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Make sure it's nice and dry before you do it, too. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, thanks. And there's Barbara, there's Diane. Oh, Rob, Rob, can you skip up to where it says Diane again? Diane. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey. That's a cozy little cabin. You know what we left out? We left out the, the chimney. It needs a little chimney. The <laughs> chimney. I guess, the, I don't know why, maybe it was this cloud in the background that made me think of that, I don't know. Your cloud, your sky is amazing. I love how, um, look, look how, look how it gets lighter here, as as if they are getting, uh, this maybe is a little further away. And then it gets a little darker, a little bit darker. And this is what I'm talking about, look, just, just a few little treetops, there's not much information back there and there doesn't need to be. I love how it just blends into the light there though. That's great. This is this is fantastic. Oh yeah, I'm not sure how I handled the those, you know, those I, I threw a couple of little trees and sticks and stuff over it, so you Okay. Yeah. Um I just threw a no, that's too dark, but I mean I, I threw uh 
one of these little guys over there. You know, just... Okay, okay. Little sticky thing. Okay. I, I can hear somebody back there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not Diane. <laughs> oh, do you, what do you hear? Do you hear water? Hold on, hold on. I hear someone doing something back there. <clears throat> no, I don't hear water. I just hear somebody working. Otherwise, I have to get out and mute everybody, so let's make sure we're muted. Okay. I, I think Diane thinks it's in her house. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I think it might be my husband. Oh, okay. That, that's fine. I just, I just to... told him to stop. Um, he was over by the sink. Okay. Isn't that weird how those little sounds... I know. ...over our thing can you really... You, you can really hear them. So oh, anyway, geez. look at this. By the way, look at this back here. You got that and then this in the foreground. Look at the depth. Great. I mean, it... Those are boobs. They look totally effortless. And it really works. So. Now. I probably need more Oh, so, yeah, I don't know about <laughs> That feels pretty good, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, anyway, any way you look at it, it's not that big of a deal. But sometimes what happens is that people have, they'll have the roof going up here and this one going down there. And they connect them, and it, and it gets a little wonkish. Okay, um, we talked about. Oh yeah, I love your water, by the way. Wow, you have nice water. Oh, I I wanted to add a little bit of gouache, as you suggested, just to kind of show those white, the foamy parts. Yeah. Yeah, I would. Uh, I would definitely throw in. A, here and there. Okay. Okay. Like, it's just what they, what happens is that the, the water's going in this direction, right? Uh -huh. And then it splashes on things. So it'll right. hit things, it'll splash, and it'll create a little ripple. And it'll go to the next thing and create a little bit of ripple. Okay. So they, they do that along the edges of things too. And, you know, sometimes in, in the angle of the camera doesn't really pick up on it. So. You know, it depends on how fast the river's moving and such. Okay. All right. Um, and then if you want to glaze a little blue into that way, you can hit a little blue into there too, which is okay. here and there. Is my, is my, the little barn or shack, is it looking too dead in its, in color? <laughs> so then how about we throw in a little bit more, just, just glaze in, Oh, yeah. A little saturation here and there. Okay. Too. Maybe it could use a couple of accents. You know, you know, watch what happens when I glaze. See, that I hit it along the edge? Mm hmm Sometimes that's all you need. Okay. That that helps. It kind of warms it, it up. Little edges, little marks and edges and things like this. Little, little, um, little yellow here and there. Okay. Possibly a little green. If they stand out too much, Maybe just take a little bit of the, the background color and 